my absolutely beautiful Gemini friends and welcome to your horoscope for 2021 where this year Gemini it's interesting because I do feel like there's a fair amount of energy that has been shaking and waking up in this 12th house for you where Uranus has been with Taurus projects dreams, seclusion, the downtime, going back to things from the past, even maybe feeling a little bit lost through 2020 beyond just some of the confusion that was going on. I think it was also a time where in 2020 you were looking at or beginning to really, really come into contact with some behavior and idea patterns that stopped you from progressing forward. And as we're here in 2021, Uranus has done the shaking already. He's still going to be in this energy, squaring Saturn three different times um, bang on in 2021. So this actually, I think here, gives you this beautiful release. And it's a release and a challenge to your thinking and to your behavior patterns that have maybe been standing in the way. It's also a really great year. I think for you to be expanding into some kind of maybe not new field, but a field in a much different way. And maybe it even is a full new field for you. But from the 12th house, it almost has this sense to me that this is something maybe you've known how to do or it's been around and maybe there's been things in the way of being able to do that. But the other thing I think about in the 12th house is the fact that all of that is being shaken and woken up this year, but we've got the transiting nodes in Gemini. We've got the eclipses happening on the Gemini and Sagittarian axes this year. So it's a really important energy where um, I feel like there's a lot of what makes Gemini Gemini on the table for you this year, right? Where do we really get to see you shine in your own voice and your own presence this year? Not being tapped down, not being held back, not feeling like there's all of this motion where you're not actually being able to really jump forward, but instead this, this energy of expansion. And being in Gemini eclipses, I'm seeing this picture, so please let me know in the comment section down below if this is you, but it's almost as if you are a sharer of stories or a sharer of networking this year in a very heavy way. You're taking yourself in whatever way to these things and sharing the story of what's going on. So I think it's going to be a really brilliant and beautiful year. So let's jump in here and talk about what's going on for you this year. Now, first of all, Mercury is going to retrograde three times this year, Mercury being your ruling planet. When he goes retrograde, we get a chance to review, revise, re-edit, reconnect, reunion sometimes, whatever it is that's going on. Now, this is all going to be happening for us in the energy of air this year. We've had two years of Mercury retrogrades in water signs, so this is going to bring us out of that emotional body so much, but more into the mind, into the thinking, into the ideas. So we're going to see the first retrograde retrograde happening um, in January, and this will be in the energy of Aquarius. So we're going to retrograde through this ninth house space for you, where we will also see Saturn up there. We will see Jupiter happening up there. So there's going to be a busy amount of thinking and reviewing and re-editing and maybe even course correcting to your educational track, publishing, marketing, broadcasting, whatever you're doing to expand yourself out. I mean, maybe this is even the year where it's like, I'm going to start this travel channel blog, or I'm going to talk about these philosophies from, from other countries. Because remember, the ninth house can also get us involved in foreign things or things that have been foreign to us before. Jupiter will be up there. So it's a very happy expansion idea um, in terms of pursuing something that's maybe a little bit different. Now, the next retrograde we will see will be in May, and this is going to be in the energy of Gemini. So right there in your first house. So ruling sign, retrograding in your ruling planet retrograding in your sign. So this is a re-reflecting on you. I think that as we get here to this spring summer time, it's going to be a prime time for you, Gemini, to check in and see if you are in appropriate alignment to see if you are, you know, what are the stories you're telling yourself in your head? How are you showing up out in the world? How are you showing up in the decisions you're making and in your relationships? Remember, we're going to have eclipses that are also happening in Sagittarius. We've got a south node happening in it 
in Sagittarius this year. So are you pulling forward or are you staying there in the past? And if you are in the past on things, Gemini, there will definitely be experiences to work through and look at letting go. Because truly, truly this Uranus and Taurus in this 12th house is, is your signal to shake free from what has been rooted down over there because beneath what's been rooted is beautiful, healthy soil with gems in it. So you really want to go for that this year, okay? Now the third eclipse we'll see will be in September and it'll be in the energy of Libra. So this immediately brings this idea of balance to the table. You know, am I in balance? Am I out of balance in this particular area? But also I think that this is the retrograde where truly if it's not working out, I think you're going to let go of some relationships. I definitely think that you will shut a couple relationships down if they are not, um, if you guys are not in alignment, okay? As well, we've got Saturn and Uranus. They are going to square each other, and this is big news for the year, okay? They're going to square each other three different times in February, June, and December. Now, this square, don't resist the square, the square is coming to genuinely shake you, force you out of the boxes that you've been in. Aquarius is a fixed energy. Taurus is a fixed energy. These ideas, these beliefs, these attitudes that you've had in this area, they're so grounded down that you need something forceful enough to bust the rut essentially. So we're going to see this dance again between that ninth house, 12th house. Where is your expansion going? Where are you taking your spiritual um, content? Where are you taking your lived experiences? Where are you taking your own trauma and drama and sickness and sharing that with other people in a way where people can be fed, they can be nourished, they can live, they can know that they don't have to be in fear. That is a perfect way that you can go back access your own experience and turn that into something that becomes your own version of broadcasting and expanding out as well and how better to do that than in a very Aquarian way where you bring something special to the table so that everybody can eat how gorgeous is that as an information sharer I think that is a lovely gift that you have to offer now when we get to May we're going to see Jupiter taking a step into the energy of Pisces which he also rules in traditional astrology so this will be tip top in your chart in the 10th house okay Jupiter coming um, into this energy of, of Pisces, he's very expansive. And in Pisces, he's comfortable. So when planets are comfortable um, where they are at, the energy flows, right? So I feel like it's just this beautiful energy at the top of your chart that is available and ready to flow. Jupiter wants to expand you here. So it's like this preview to where your real expansion is going to be able to go. And the skies are the limit. But your you and your relationships and you're looking at some of these patterns that might stand in the way I think are also going to play a critical role in making sure that you can expand out. I keep coming back to this vision of this experience like this maybe this is genuinely what I was being shown the first time is you're sharing your experience you're sharing your story in order to help or to broadcast it out in some way. And this is what helps your career as well. So whatever that looks like in whatever capacity, please let me know if that's you in the comment section down below. This will also be an energy with Jupiter coming into Pisces where it's almost like you are spiritualizing your work. You are thinking in a way that is more expansive but spiritual in the workplace as well. So I think it sheds a lot of light for you to be able to be seen as we get to this placement in May. Now Jupiter is going to retrograde and come back into the energy of Aquarius, so back into that ninth house. And you'll have a chance to review how you really want to expand that Jupiter energy out in the energy of Pisces, that career energy, as we get to the end of the year. Now we're going to have the eclipse seasons going on as well. So we've got an eclipse May 26th. This will be at 5 degrees of Sagittarius. We've got one June 10th, which is a solar eclipse at 19 degrees of Gemini. So in that first house for you, November 19th is our like off the Gemini Sag axes eclipse. And it's going to be at 27 degrees of Taurus over there in the energy that Uranus is at, but they're not going to be close enough to actually be in super impact to one another. And then we've got the last eclipse happening December 4th, which is also a solar eclipse happening in Sagittarius. So the eclipse journey, 
harmony between your first house, your seventh house, the me and the we. There is a lot of dancing that goes on there. Not to mention Jupiter as the ruling planet of Sagittarius. Your relationships being first in Aquarius, which is really right. Like expand these relationships. Tell the truth in relationships. Make sure we're in the right spiritual, religious, legal alignments with our relationships. And then we see Jupiter move into Pisces. So this is again realigning and expanding these relationships in the workplace because Jupiter is the ruling planet of Sagittarius. So as these eclipses come, expect to see course corrections with the people in your life and not just people. It's people, places, and things. Who and what are you aligned with? Because Aquarius is a great liberation energy. So if you're aligned with people, places, and things that you don't feel like you can nourish and they can nourish you this year, it's okay. See it in the behavior pattern. Let the fear go and let those things move on so that the right things can move just as quickly in. We're in a very heavy um, air time. So allow the new things to come blowing in, okay? When we do get to November and we've got that lunar eclipse happening in the energy of Taurus, I do want to say this, even though, even though Uranus is too far away to be in conjunction with this particular eclipse, I do think that it's going to have a little bit of impact here in terms of you may have a genius idea that genuinely 12th house comes out of nowhere and then you're able to take that forward and really create something. Or what you do is you have this genius idea that comes out of nowhere and you're like, this is getting me nowhere. I have got to put this down and I think you are all the better for it for Sure. Now we're going to have Venus heading into retrograde December 19th in the energy of Capricorn. This is going to be in the eighth house of shared resources, intimacy, taxes, insurance, astrology, inheritance, any of these kinds of things, sex, the actual reproductive organ in your body. Venus is going to have this retrograde here, but remember we had an eclipse that also happened in Taurus along with Uranus being there. So I think it's it, it's it's going to be a retrograde that allows you to push forward by going backwards to something. Do you value the structure that's under your feet? Capricorn. Do you value genuinely letting go of situations, people, places, and things that are not serving you anymore so that you can build this really valuable harmony-based foundation underneath your feet. So I think that whatever comes up for you around this Venus retrograde, which is going to last into 2022 in this eighth house area, it may be genuinely asking you to go to the secrets, go to the things that are hidden, go to the dreams that you have, your deepest desires that you create in the 12th house, the space of fantasy, and then you bring it forward into a material world and give it a sense of structure and value and make sure that it's in place during the retrograde so it can really live and breathe um, as we move out of that retrograde. Then as we close out the year and we get to December 29th, Jupiter's gonna hop back into that energy of Pisces for the stay. So then you really have this expansive energy up there in your 10th house, ready to work, ready to have you being seen, ready to see your work expanding. So take advantage of opportunities because Jupiter brings opportunities in either of the signs, in whatever sign he is in this year. He's going to bring opportunities and things that come your way that allow you to start to achieve in a different way, allow you a space of freedom and allow you, I think, the travel and the expansion that you've maybe been really wanting um, to have your own experience with. So I think that 2021 is not any more shocking than we experienced in 2020. It's simply that 2020 had to happen. And now in 2021, Gemini, you learn to build, you learn to grow where you were planted, but you're doing it from the space of creating your dreams in a material way. But this is a lot of dreaming that's happening. It's a lot of visioning that's been on the table, but then there's the grounded fixed energy work of Gemini having Having to say where do I have to just detach or settle so that these behaviors or these ideas or these patterns are not holding me back anymore so that I can really live those opportunities.
All right, Gemini, I think it's going to be a beautiful 2021. Please keep me posted on what's happening for you. I love to come back to these videos, you know, like at the end of the year and see what's been true for you, what manifested, what did you do with the timings that we discuss in this video. So please, please, please let me know. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I will see you here on YouTube, on the podcast, Patreon, Instagram, in all of the places. I will see you wherever we can connect. I will see you weekly and monthly, and you can find links to everything in the description box down below. I love you, Gemini. Have a great year.